Good morning guys and welcome to another Blowdown episode. So today is going to be an estuary episode again. Uh, we're going to try and catch white steambrass, the elusive white steambrass. Okay, so we're here with Quentin again today. And uh, first we're going to do some bait collection. We're going to show you how to collect sandworm, hopefully. We're going to show you how to collect sandworm. And then we're going to try bloodworm and... What are we going to call moonshine worms? Monskane? <laughs> What's monskane? Moonshine. We're going to try and get some moonshine worms. And then if there's enough time on low tide, we're going to also try and get some snapper prawns. Then we'll show you how to bait up with sandworm. There's a special way to bait up bloodworm, sandworm, um, so the blast oppies don't um, chow your line. Um, yeah, we're going to show you everything, the setup that we use. We've got the little um, cabin boat again today. And yeah, it's winter, so you can see I'm fully dressed in gumboots and everything. I'm going to have to take that off because you do take that off um, because we're going to wrestle uh, the bloodworms. We're going to put our hands in the cold water. But yeah, I just want to show you quickly. We are launching here at Leisure Isle. Um, and it's absolutely a beautiful launch site. Yeah, it's brilliant facilities, very friendly people, uh, boat moorings. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm just excited to be on the water again. Okay, so yeah, we're quickly going to launch the boat. And then once we are in the water, um, I'll show you a little bit more what we are going to do. Okay, so we are on a little island, as you can see. Um, we're going to go looking for sandworm and mudworm. This is going to be freezing cold. I want to say another word, but... I. I think there's kids watching. So yeah, um, we're gonna have to take off most of our clothes because you have to stick your arm in the hole. And um, yeah, I'm not looking. I'm not looking forward to this at all. Oh, it's gonna be cold. Ah! Come on, let's stay so long, warm. I see you track not running your clothes out. No, so no man, you can't even enter the gate. <laughs> there's one layer there's two layers and that's layer number three coming off oh that's a lucky chilly wind oh. you might have said the water must all work Quentin is trying to wet his shirt. No sand ones.
Okay guys, so this is what we're looking for. That is called a sandworm. Okay, so once you locate your, your hole, let me show you like this. Once you locate the hole, you pump down with your with your um, prawn pump, you pump down, and once you've got your hole, you start making, you start move your hand like this. And then it starts making the hole bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And then you will feel the, the, the worms on the side and you just keep working, working, working that hole like that and the hole becomes bigger and deeper and bigger and deeper and bigger and deeper and then you'll feel the worms on the side and then be very careful because they break do break uh very easily so be careful with them and then uh yeah we've got a little bucket i'm just gonna put some water in there for them you can see that's what happens to the hole when you work that hole so i'm just gonna put a little bit of water in there for them guys so we've got a um yeah and keep working that hole um, normally there's not only one but a couple of worms in that hole so yeah we've got a we've got two now but we do need a lot more um, we're going to start looking for blood worms as well but yeah um, we decided to to buy these transparent um, little bins today so yeah finally we got some bait okay so um, after a lot of hard work we managed to get a couple and there's our sandwich cool, okay so we'll show you later on how to bite up we're quickly going to try and get a lot of uh some blood ones there we go okay and there's our sandwich very nice okay so we're quickly gonna hey that's beautiful what a day what a day on night huh? so we're gonna um go to another little bank where we get our blood ones and then we're gonna get the blood ones and go on and show you how to get the blood ones as well. Oh, another one. Okay, so this is the hole that Kona was pumping at. You can see there's a nice indent and there's his blowhole. So around about 30 centimeters away from there's a little blowhole, a little volcano like I said, and there's the hole that he was pumping. Second pump and it was out. So it looks like we might have found a little sand bank here that's gonna produce a couple of worms for us. Okay, and there you have a nice nut blood worm as you can see in my hand nice and big there's the head and the tail oh <laughs> look at that look at that one <laughs> look at that little monster <laughs> that's a that's a small snake <laughs> yeah that's a small little snake of a blood worm okay so yeah there's a couple of blood worms in there now we're gonna continue searching for a couple of blood worms if you've got more blood worms but look at that beautiful it's so beautiful loving i'm gonna continue searching for a couple more blood worms and uh, then we're gonna go fishing okay guys so um we're using when i know when i love these berkeley fusion hooks this is a four -oh. four -oh, yeah four -oh circle berkeley fusion um and i'm just gonna do a normal figure eight on the stem Make sure that you push it in from the front, otherwise you're not going to be able to use the uh, circle look as it was designed for. So that's a figure eight on the stem. If you don't want to untie it, then you can see it's a figure eight on the stem. And then uh, what happens? Circle look will go in the corner of the mouth and it will look and will sit in the corner of the mouth. Okay, and then we're going to take a sandworm. And uh, when I said that what he's going to do with these sandworms is he ties a piece of cotton around the head I'm going to use a big one or a small one yeah. what did you do? when I just cotton around the head? Mm. like that? No, at the end hmm? at the end of the, on the tip <laughs> which side is the head and which side is the bottom? <laughs> <laughs> closer to the tip yes sir okay it's 
good. En enough. But more. Okay. Now you put the hook right through this, through the. Okay, um, so if you remember correctly, we had an episode where we caught grunters here in Eisner, and we did the same with the choker. So that did make sure that there is a secure place for the for the hook and it can't slide out. No, it's nice and proud. So nice and proud the hook. I know there's a lot of guys that uh, slide it through the whole worm, but then you've got the peckers. The little blast oppies and everybody that will come nibble on your line because the blast oppies got a, a beak, uh, a, a mouth like a parrot. So when as soon as there's any bait on your line, it will come and it will nibble, nibble, nibble. And then when you big fish want to catch big fish, you lose the fish. Hey, squirting. Hey, it's a squirter. <laughs> okay, so there's, uh, there's our bait for the steam brass. That's how it's going to look. And we've got this little bead uh, just to attract a little bit more attention to the fish. It looks like the worm is chasing the bead. <laughs> yeah, I just want to say to, to, to the guys, don't be scared to leave your hook open. I think a lot of guys when they start fishing, they think the fish are going to see the hook. The fish won't see the hook. It's very important that your hook is proud and open, that when the fish takes the bait, that it, it's, it's, it's open so that it can hook the, um, set the hook. Okay, so in the way that we're fishing now is we also allow the fish to eat. Once we feel a nibble, we're not going to pick up the rod and start if it, start reeling it in. So we leave it because we know if it's feeding from behind, because in this current it's going to dangle in the current, so the fish is going to come from behind, it's going to nibble, 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 and then it's going to swallow the whole bait. So, um, yeah, if you if your hook sometimes, the granted and steady, if your hook is right there at the bottom, it, you, you might get it. Um, on the first go but sometimes it might feel the hook so we want the fish to start really feeding on the bait uh, and then swallow the whole bait before we will we'll start catching it and the circle hook allows us to do that so we can catch with a nice loose track and the kids, fish is going to catch himself Ne! Ne too Okay guys, so now I'm going to show you how I'm going to bite up the bloodworm, basically the same as I did with the, uh, with the sandworm. So all I'm going to do is uh, hook like that through the head. Okay, and that's, that's how I rig up my bloodworm. I prefer the little bloodworms, the smaller bloodworms. We'll bite up a bigger one a little bit later on. But I prefer the, the smaller bloodworms like that. And that is a deadly bait for a cob. Uh, we'll take that. And um, Stianney will take that. There's actually no fish that won't take that. Grunter will take that. Okay, so now we've got six lines in the water. And we're going to view a beautiful sunset here in Eisner. There's an old train bridge. don't think there's a train running on that anymore. Everything has gone to... In this country <laughs> so yeah and uh, yeah normally we do deep sea fishing but this is the relax fishing so we've got our six lines in the water four sandworms and two bloodworms and um, yeah the beautiful town of Nysa and uh, this is on the pushing tide we're fishing now as soon as the water a little bit fuller we're gonna move up uh, the river but um, loose tracks, uh, I didn't tell you about the, the leader lines, but we're using a sliding sinker rig. Um, see the sliding sinker, that's about 20 centimeters the line. And you've got a swivel on the main line with, uh, <laughs> with, your, with your hook trace. Uh, that's about 70 to 80 centimeters. Kona, what's the line? That we're using on the leader um, on the bait on the hook trace. Yeah, you can go a bit thinner. Um, I usually go for granters on like 10 kilogram maxima, but you can go up to not 10 is actually fine for for steering because you you you're fishing with light tackle. So um, yeah, and then tonight we're gonna obviously use a braid as our mm. as our hook leader. Because of the blast opis. Because of the, the blast opis in the water. 
Okay, so because Grunter and White Stemmers that we're targeting today doesn't have teeth. Uh, they've got these big fat uh, lips and they swallow their bait, bait hole. So it's not like a cob or something that's got little teeth. Um, so that you need a thick leader line that they can chow through the leader line. That's not the case in this in, in when you're fishing for grunter and stiamras. So that's why we, you can go down and they're very skittish when they're biting. They're very skittish. So they pick up if there's a thick line, if you're using a thick um, trace line for your hooks, they do pick up on that very easily. So yeah, that's why we're using a little bit of a, a thinner line, lighter line. Okay guys, so we move spots now. Um, there was a lot of grass there and that's one of the reasons that we use that um, sliding sinker with the little piece of, of line um, as soon as you just put a ball sinker on the grass misses that and it goes straight onto your hook so as soon as you've got that that little um, sliding sinker with it with a trace small trace on uh, it catches all the grass and your bait will still stay nice and open but there's definitely something nibbling on that sandworm there look at that so hopefully there will be a pickup there but uh, it looks like something small is just nibbling on that sand well while that fish is deciding what it's going to do um, i am going to cut open a bloodworm and i'm going to turn it around and make a very juicy bite out of it Good. Okay, so, so what I've done guys is I've cut open the blood worm halfway off of the worm I've cut it open now I'm gonna mess blood everywhere first <laughs> now what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take the cotton I'm gonna go make a nice little sausage Here you can see that that is the inside of the blood worm I'm using. I'm tying that onto the blood worm. I'm gonna make a nice sausage out of that. And then I'm gonna use a single look through the head. It's all about flavor. So I'm probably gonna get a lot of peckers on this thing. Nice and juicy. Like I said, I'm gonna get everything full of blood first. What do you think, Connor? Just a little bit more yarn there. Huh? Yeah, they were you could. Oh. Just gonna make a nice little base there where we're gonna put the hook through. So that it can't rip out. Yeah, there's your birds flying. <laughs> there's your nice bloodworm bait. Half of the bloodworm was cut open, flipped back over, and uh, yeah, that's flavor. That is a bait that um, I don't think there's a lot of fishes that would not eat that. That doesn't catch something, I don't know, then I'm giving up.
I don't wanna say anything Cause if I do, I might say the wrong words Oh no So keep my mouth shut and I listen My friend Okay guys, it's uh, just after dark now. We've got a beautiful sunset here on Niza. And it's just after dark and we've hooked our first fish. Um, Kona says you think it's a stomp news. Still on the pushing tide. Tide's pushing very slowly at the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Off. Oh. Hi. So okay, the fish are starting to bite. So um, yeah, we're just waiting for the water to turn, and then we're gonna uh, move over to another spot. But yeah, this fish is at least the fish is starting to bite. Okay, firstly, it's freezing cold. <laughs> I think I've got five or six layers of clothing on. And secondly, this has turned into a catch cook now. We're catching and we're cooking. <laughs> <laughs> so Kona is making us some beautiful steaks. The lines are in the water. Nice, nice looking nice. The moon is up. Yeah. So um yeah, it is kind of just after seven now. Uh, the tide has just turned and we've moved spots again. Uh, so actually waited some time for the tide to turn. Um but we've got the back anchor out as well now. And hopefully we can show you a fish soon. Okay, so after all night of cold, I've decided we're not going to catch one today. <laughs> but it was fun being out yet again. And that is beautiful sunrise over nice now this morning. Yeah, I just love nice now. It's always beautiful being out here. We had a beautiful sunset last night and now we've got a beautiful sunrise but we are packing up um yeah rods and everything is already packed up so we are going to head home now and then i'm going to take a nice hot shower and a cup of coffee so i hope to see you guys soon unfortunately we did not catch that white white steamer this time but we'll be back and uh, i will show you a white steamer this season 